So, every time we go through these rational functions, we go through the same order. We start with determining if there's a horizontal asymptote, okay? So, what was the condition in which we did not have a horizontal asymptote? If the top is bigger than the bottom. If the degree at the top is bigger than the degree at the bottom, we did not have a horizontal asymptote. But I said in parentheses, we may have a slant asymptote. Well, here's the deal. When the top degree is exactly one degree greater, x cubed over x squared, x squared over x, x over a constant, x to the fourth over x cubed, you're going to have a slant asymptote. Okay, you're going to have a slant asymptote. So to figure out what that slant asymptote is, we're going to divide the numerator by the denominator using the long division, and guess what? You don't have to worry about the remainder. You're only concerned about the quotient. Okay, the quotient by itself is your slant asymptote. So let's look at this example. We've got x squared minus x over x plus 1. So do we have a horizontal asymptote? No, we do not. Okay, but we do have a slant asymptote. We still do need to check for all the other stuff too. We need to check for holes, so that means we need to factor. The top has a GCF of x. It factors into x times x minus 1. <clears throat> so do we have a hole? No. No holes. Do we have a vertical asymptote? Yes, we do. Set the denominator equal to zero and solve. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative one. And now we need to figure out what the slant asymptote is. So we divide the numerator by the denominator. So x squared minus x Stick a plus zero on the end there. You're missing a constant. So x squared divided by x is x. x times x is x squared. x times 1 is 1x. Subtract. x squared minus x squared is 0. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Be careful with that. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. It's not 0. Divide negative 2x by x, that gives us negative 2. Technically, you can stop, okay? The long division is not finished, but we have all the information that we need for our slant asymptote. Our slant asymptote is, it's a line, so you need to write y equals x minus 2. Now, let me show you how you can check this, okay? We looked at some of the graphs yesterday, so I'm going to graph this. x squared minus x over x plus 1. Okay, um, so I'm just going to start, whoops, let me fix my, fix my window here, okay. Here is our rational function, okay, or yeah, rational function. Notice the vertical line there at negative 1. Uh, we don't have a hole or anything like that. Here's how you can check your slant asymptote. Type in the equation for the slant asymptote into your y2. x minus 2, I'm putting that in y2. So if I did it correctly, see how that lies perfectly right in between those two curves. Okay? And we can see the function approaching it over here and had I messed something up, say, um, what if I had said negative 1 minus 1 is 0? So I just would have gotten x as my slant asymptote. Okay, if I had just gotten x, I'm going to graph it there. See how that doesn't fit? Okay, it crosses through the function. You'll know that you did something wrong with your slant asymptote. Okay, um, now it kind of has to be somewhat of a big error. If you just made a slight mistake, sometimes it still looks like it fits. Um, but that's just one way to kind of to double check your work there. Okay, let's do another one. Actually, two more. I think uh, I only have one more on your paper. I threw an extra one in there. Huh? Do I have two more? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, I got you. Okay. So let's look at this one. No horizontal asymptote. Obviously, it's in the slant asymptote section for a reason. 
Okay. Um, so none for the horizontal asymptote. Let's check for our holes. The top factors into x minus 2 times x plus 1. Here is a prime example of where you have to be very careful with your signs. If you got those signs backwards, then you would cancel the x minus 1 and you would say that you have a hole at 1 when you don't. So there's no hole on this one. We do have a vertical asymptote at 1. Because the denominator was x minus 1, so that means the vertical asymptote is at positive 1. Our numerator is exactly one degree greater than the denominator, so we need to do our long division to find our slant asymptote. x squared divided by x is x. Multiply, we get x squared minus x. Subtract, x squared minus x squared is 0. Negative 1 minus a negative 1. This time it is 0. Okay, because subtracting a negative, same as adding a positive, so you got negative 1 plus 1, it's 0. 0 x divided by x is 0, okay? So here's the case, this is what I just said uh, you could have made the mistake of on the last one. Your slant asymptote is just y equals x. The line y equals x goes through the origin. Yes, sir. You're not dividing by 0. You're dividing 0 by 1. Because it, <clears throat> it's 0x divided by 1x. That's 0. It's not 1x divided by 0. That would be, that would be undefined. Okay. Remember, 0 divided by a number is okay. A number divided by 0 is no way. Okay. All right. Let's do one more. No horizontal asymptote. The degree of the numerator is one degree greater than the denominator. Holes. We need to factor. How do we factor that numerator? Grouping. Grouping. Okay. <laughs> take an x squared out of the first two terms. What do we take out of the second two? A negative four, right? It's okay. It happens. Oh, because that one didn't factor by grouping. It looked like factoring by grouping, but if you had started to do it, you would have found out that it didn't work. The bottom, difference perfect squares. We are not finished with the top. x squared minus 4 times 2x plus 5 over x plus 2 times x minus 2. Well, guess what? x squared minus 4 is x plus 2, x minus 2. I'm going to run out of room. Ooh. All right, so we have, what, two holes? That hasn't really happened to us yet, but it is possible to have more than one hole. Okay, uh, we've got x plus 2 is equal to 0. We have x minus 2 is equal to 0. So we get negative 2 and positive 2. What else do we have to do with our holes? We got, we got to plug it back in. We got to plug it into the simplified version to find their y coordinates. So this one would be positive 1. The other one would be 9. So we have holes at negative 2, positive 1 and at positive 2, 9. Do we have a vertical asymptote? Do we have a denominator left? No. No vertical asymptotes because our simplified version is just 2x plus 5. So tell me this. What's our slant asymptote going to be? It's actually, it's just 2x plus 5. Because we already did the division, okay? You, you don't think about it this way, but when you factor it completely and you cancel out those terms and you don't end up with a denominator, that means it is evenly divisible by that denominator. This is all that you have left. So technically, this
this one doesn't have a slant asymptote because this is what the function behaves like. Remember we had that one yesterday where the denominator canceled and when I graphed it, it just looked like a straight line with, hole, with a hole in it. That happens here, okay? This is a straight line, 2x plus 5. That's what this rational function looks like when you graph it. Plus 5x squared minus 8x minus 20 is evenly divisible by 